Halotrons are one of the three groups of eukaryotic class II transposable elements TS so far described. They are the eukaryotic rolling circle transposable elements which are hypothesized to transpose by a rolling circle replication mechanism via a single-stranded DNA intermediate. They were first discovered in plants Arabidopsis thalaana and Oryza sativa and in the nematode Kynorhabditis elegans, and now they have been identified in a diverse range of species, from protists to mammals. Helotrons make up a substantial fraction of many genomes where non-autonomous elements frequently outnumber the putative autonomous partner. Helotrons seem to have a major role in the evolution of host genomes. They frequently capture diverse host genes, some of which can evolve into novel host genes or become essential for helotron transposition. Topic: History Helotrons were the first group of TES to be discovered by computational analysis of whole genome sequences. The first helotrons described were called A, ATHE1, Atrep and Basho which are non-autonomous helotrons found in the genome of Arabidopsis thalarana, a small flowering plant. Despite these discoveries, the classification of helotrons was unknown until 2001 when the discovery of protein coding elements which were predicted to be the autonomous partners. Kapitanov and Jerka investigated the coding capacity of helotrons in A. thalarana, Oryza sativa, and Kynorhabditis elegans using in silico studies of repetitive DNA of these organisms, computational analysis and Monte Carlo simulation. They described the structure and coding potential of canonical helotrons and proposed the rolling circle mechanism of transposition as well as the possibility that some of the encoded genes captured from the host are now used for replication. Their survey of the genome of these organisms showed that helotron activity could contribute to a significant fraction of the plant and invertebrate genomes where they were found, but the extent of their distribution elsewhere was not clear. In 2003, a group of investigators studied the structure of proteins related to helotrons and the different coding domains within them by looking for helotron like elements in vertebrates, specifically zebra fish, Danio rerio, and a puffer fish, Sphoeroids nephilus. The rep helicase proteins were predicted to be 500 to 700 amino acids longer because of AC terminal fusion of a domain with homology to a perinic apyrimidinic ap endonuclease. Previous phylogenetic studies showed that the ap endonuclease is nested within the chicken repeat 1 CR1 clade of non-long terminal repeat non-LTR retrotransposons. This relationship suggested that appendonuclease originated from a retrotransposon insertion either nearby or within a helotron. These investigators were not able to identify the ends of the rep helicase endonuclease unit of helotrons. In recent years, helotrons have been identified in all eukaryotic kingdoms, but their genomic copy numbers are highly variable, even among closely related species. They make up 1-5% of the genomic DNA in different fruit flies, 0-3% in mammals, greater than 0.5% in the frog. In most mammals helotron's presence is negligible and limited to remnants of old transposons, with the exception of bat genomes, which are populated by numerous young elements. However, many years after the description autonomous helotrons, no mechanistic studies have been published and therefore the rolling circle mechanism of transposition remains a well-supported but not yet tested hypothesis. <laughs> <laughs> Structure Helotrons are structurally asymmetric and are the only class of DNA transposons that do not generate duplications of target sites during transposition. Canonical helotrons typically begin with a 5 feet T, C, T and terminate with the nucleotides CTRR most frequently CTAG, but occasionally variation has been noted but do not contain terminal inverted repeats. In addition, they frequently have a short palindromic sequence 16 to 20 nucleotides, hairpin about 11 bp from the 3 feet end. They integrate between an at-host denucleotide. 
Some families of helotrons also carry tandem repeats, like microsatellites and minisatellites which are generally highly mutable sequences. Most helotrons are non-autonomous elements and share common termini and other structural hallmarks with autonomous helotrons, but they do not encode any complete set of proteins encoded by the autonomous elements. The main enzymatic hallmarks of helotrons are the rolling circle RC replication initiator rep and DNA helicase HEL domains which are present in a protein comprising 1000 to 3000 amino acids RR rep HEL encoded by all autonomous helotron elements. The rep helicase protein includes zinc finger motifs, the rep domain, which is a approximately 100 RR and has her endonuclease activity, and an 8 domain PIF1 family helicase, superfamily 1, which are universally conserved in helotrons. The zinc finger-like motifs have been associated with DNA binding. The approximately 400 RR HEL domain is classified as a 5 feet to 3 feet DNA HEL which is involved in the breaking and joining of single-stranded DNA and are characterized by both the presence of the HU motif two histidine residues separated by a hydrophobic residue and the Y motif one or two tyrosine residues that are separated by several amino acids. The PIF1 family of helicases HEL, has 5 feet to 3 feet unwinding activity which for many rolling circle entities this activity is host encoded. Plant helotrons also encode an open reading frame with homology to single-stranded DNA binding proteins RPA. Typically, the RPA proteins in helotrons are 150 to 500 RR long and are encoded by several exons. In all helotrons, the rep domain precedes the hell domain. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Mechanism of rolling circle transposition. Helotrons are proposed to transpose by a mechanism similar to rolling circle replication via a single-stranded DNA intermediate. Two models are proposed for the transposition mechanism: the concerted and the sequential. In the concerted model, the donor strand cleavage and ligation occurs simultaneously while in the sequential model they occur in a stepwise fashion. The concerted model does not require a circular intermediate although they could occur if a step fails or is bypassed during transposition. The sequential model differs in that a circular intermediate is a required step of transposition and because circular intermediates are not known for helotrons, the concerted model was adapted to explain transposition. Helotron could be either autonomous or non-autonomous. Two transposase molecules cleave at the donor by the first tyrosine Y1 residue of the rep protein and target sites by the second tyrosine Y2 residue and bind to the resulting 5 feet ends. The free 3 feto in the target DNA attacks the DNA Y1 bond and forms a bond with the donor strand resulting in strand transfer. Replication at the cleaved donor site initiates at the free 3 feto where the donor strand serves as a primer for DNA synthesis by host DNA polymerase and replication proceeds to displace one strand of helotron. If the palindrome and 3 feet end of the element are recognized correctly, cleavage occurs after the CTRR sequence and the one helotron strand is transferred to the donor site where DNA replication resolves the heteroduplex. Also, in the one-ended type fusions, the inserted fragment of donor DNA is flanked at one end, constant end by IRR and at the other end by the CTTG or GTTC sequence present in the donor variable end in a way that usually results in multiple tandem insertions of the donor plasmid or capture of flanking sequence in the target site. This failure to recognize the termination signal for helotron transposition may result in the DNA flanking the three feet end of the helotron being transferred along with the helotron to the donor site as well gene capture. This may be how helotrons have acquired additional coding sequences. Despite this hypothesis, further experiments are necessary to verify the mechanism of transposition. Using reconstituted Hellraiser transposons to study helotron transposition it was shown that the donor site must be double-stranded and that single-stranded donors will not suffice. <laughs> <laughs> Mechanisms of gene capture The presence of contiguous exons and introns within the host DNA carried by helotrons suggested a DNA-based mechanism of acquisition. 
Halotron gene capture was proposed to occur in a stepwise or sequential manner, i.e., gene capture occurs during one transposition and capture of a second gene occurs during a subsequent transposition event. Stepwise capture would result in helotrons that contain gene fragments from different locations. The sequential capture model may explain helotrons carrying multiple gene fragments observed in other organisms. There are three major models proposed in order to explain the mechanism of gene capture at the DNA level in helotrons. End bypass model, also known as transduction or read through model 1 RTM1. Transposition initiates at the 5 feet end and gene capture occurs if the 3 feet termination signal is missed. A cryptic downstream palindrome could furnish a new terminator if the normal terminator was bypassed and all intervening sequence would be captured. In this regard, helotrons can be viewed as an exon shuffling machines. As a random sequence provides the novel termination signal, this model does not require a high density of helotrons in the genome. Chimeric transposition model, also known as read through model 2 RTM2. In this model, transposition initiates at the 5 feet end of a helotron and if the 3 feet end of that helotron is missing, so transposition is terminated at the next 3 feet end of a helotron in the correct orientation, gene capture would occur. The result is that all intervening sequence is captured. Fill a DNA FDNA model. In this model, portions of genes or non coding regions can accidentally serve as templates during repair of double stranded breaks DSBs occurring in helotrons during their transposition. Low fidelity repair of DSB by non homologous end joining is more frequent in plants and mammals than repair through homologous recombination, and is often accompanied by insertions of 100 4000 BP long filler DNA copied from diverse genomic or extra chromosomal DNA regions into DSB. This model predicts that 2 to 8 BP regions of microhomology exist between the regions that flank the DSB in the helotron and that flank the original host sequence captured by the helotron. There are also other gene capture mechanism models proposed for helotrons, site specific recombination model which is based on the shared features between helotrons and integrons, transposable element capture which is based on the integration of TES via transposition into other TES, also called T nesting. Despite all these proposed models, there is a lack of examples to limit the mechanism of gene capture to a single model. Further research is needed to understand the molecular mechanism behind gene capture and how it favors the survival of helotrons. Topic: <laughs> Impact on gene expression. Helotrons, like all other TES, are potential insertional mutagens. They might get inserted within the promoter region of a gene that results in the abolition of measurable transcripts and the observed phenotypes. In some cases it has been seen that a helotron insertion has provided regulatory motifs necessary for transcription initiation. Investigators presented evidence that helotrons have contributed putative promoters, exons, splice sites, polyadenylation sites, and microna binding sites to transcripts otherwise conserved across mammals. Helotrons drive the expression and provides de novo regulatory elements such as CAAT box, GC box, Optima motif, and Tata box sites. Helotrons also can alter the length and sequence of both 5 feet UTRs and 3 feet UTRs of the coding transcripts. Another way helotrons can control gene expression is through contributing to novel splice variants by promoting alternative splicing and by providing cryptic splice sites. A number of spontaneous mutations have been reported in plants that are caused by intronic helotron insertions that result in the generation of chimeric transcript species. Topic. Genome wide identification The atypical structure, lack of target site modification, and sequence heterogeneity of helotrons have made automated identification of helotrons difficult. 
For genome-wide analysis there are two approaches that have been applied to find canonical helitrons, de novo repeat identification approaches which can be used to build consensus libraries of all repeated sequences, but de novo repeat finding approaches will only identify helitrons that are present in multiple relatively homogeneous copies in the genome. Therefore, the low copy and older helitrons will tend to be fragmented and have poorly defined ends. These approaches are limited by the quality of the genome assembly and the homogeneity of the repeats. Another approach is structure-based which relies on the structural features of canonical helitrons and utilizes programs such as HelitronFinder, HelSearch, Helriser, and HelitronScanner. As these programs are trained on known helitron elements, they may not be efficient at identifying divergent families and they generate many false positives. This approach does not create consensus sequences of the candidate helitrons, resulting in large data sets. The sensitivity of the structure based approach correctly identified, correctly identified plus false negatives is 93%, and the specificity correctly identified, correctly identified plus false positives is 99%. There are several reasons why all other techniques for helitron discovery have been less sensitive and or more error prone. A rep helicase protein based search yields a large number of false negatives because the majority of helitrons are non autonomous elements. A similarity based search will not identify any new families and will thus work poorly in newly studied genomes. A repeat-based search requires extensive manual curation to identify helitron families, an overwhelming task in large genomes with substantial DNA repetition. On the basis of the overall sensitivity and specificity, the structure-based approach to identify helitron elements is quite successful and especially useful to identify helitron elements in a newly characterized genome. However, because at least two copies are needed to make an alignment, single copy helitrons will be missed. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Vertical inheritance and horizontal transfer. Inheritance: Genome-wide analyses showed that the bulk of helitrons tend to be quite recent. The young age of helitron families is of course biased by the genomes that have been examined carefully, which are predominantly plant and insect where the unconstrained DNA half-life the average amount of time when half of DNA not conserved for function is lost is quite rapid. In contrast to other DNA transposons, helitrons from some species have been reported to exhibit long-term activity probably due to the mechanism of transposition or inability of the host to recognize helitrons because of either sequence heterogeneity or host gene capture. In contrast, to the relatively faster unconstrained DNA half-life of the plant and insect genomes, the mammalian DNA half-life is estimated to be much slower 884 mi, which along with the minimal requirements of helitron transposition and the slow rate of decay in mammals have caused this pattern of vertical persistence. Horizontal transfer The impact of horizontal transfer HT of transposable elements may be significant due to their mutagenic potential, in inherent mobility, and abundance. Researchers found evidence for the repeated HT of four different families of helitrons in an unprecedented array of organisms, including mammals, reptiles, fish, invertebrates, and insect viruses. The helitrons present in these species have a patchy distribution and a closely related 80-98% sequence identity, despite the deep divergence times among hosts. In contrast to genes, helitrons that have horizontally transferred into new host genomes can amplify, in some cases reaching up to several hundred copies and representing a substantial fraction of the genome. As helitrons are known to frequently capture and amplify gene fragments, HT of this unique group of DNA transposons could lead to horizontal gene transfer and incur dramatic shifts in the trajectory of genome evolution. Topic. Evolutionary implication Two different scenarios describe the most likely fate of a host gene captured by helitrons. 1. The captured gene would be destroyed by multiple mutations if it did not provide any selective advantage to the transposons. 
2. It would be kept as a gene related to the original host gene if its capture is beneficial for the transposon, which is tolerated by the host. Helotrons, as most of other mobile elements in the A. thalarana and C. elegans genomes are present in the genomes in multiple highly diverged families. Considering the young age of these families and the extent of protein conservation, it is highly unlikely that the divergence observed is resulted from mutations accumulated by the transposons integrated in the host genome, proving that helotrons work as a powerful tool of evolution. They have recruited host genes, modified them to an extent that is unreachable by the Mendelian process, and multiplied them in the host genomes. Topic. Future Although it is generally accepted that helotrons are RC transposons and through numerous investigations, the role of helotron transposition in gene duplication and shaping the genetic architecture has been proven, but neither the various mechanisms by which this occurs nor the frequency is well understood. At this point, it is even unclear whether the three-feet terminus in a helotron transposon initiates or terminates the helotron replicative transposition. An important step towards investigating this mechanism would be the isolation of autonomous helotrons active in vitro and in vivo. This can be done by computational identification of complete young helotrons. In a near future, detailed computer-assisted sequence studies allow investigators to understand the evolutionary history of helotrons, together with their mechanism of gene capture and their overall significance for gene evolution. <laughs> <laughs> 